Ladies and gentlemen, Primetime CP23 here, back with another Diablo 3 video. Today we're taking a look at the official Blizzard post for the beginning of Season 16, the Season of Grandeur. Let's get right into it. Uh, so, first things first, Season 16 begins on January 18th, which is actually a week later than the uh, blue post from the community forums indicated it would be, which is good, that gives us an extra week for, uh, you know, build testing and things like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. All seasonal players will benefit from the legendary power of the Ring of Royal Grandeur. As you can see here, under secondary, the number of items needed... <laughs> Let me try that again. Reduces the number of items needed by for set bonuses by one to a minimum of two. So if you have a set that's only a two piece set you cannot have ring of royal grandeur and just use one set item and expect to get the bonus it doesn't work like that one of anything is not a set so <laughs> so uh just moving on here bear in mind this does not stack with a additional ring of royal grandeur so you cannot wear a ring of royal grandeur plus have one in the cube and expect to get the benefit from it, which means Ring of Royal Grandeur is 100% useless in this in season 16. The only benefit you will get from it is the automatic benefit you get at the beginning of the season. So, let's take a look here. News cosmetic rewards. Uh, so we are getting a new set of wings, which to me looks like butterfly wings. Um, two pieces of the Conqueror set, no one cares about, and then a kind of a scroll portrait uh, portrait frame. Uh, players can earn a brand new set of portrait frames themes around the clarion call of adventure. Okay. Um, the wings of Lempo, which like I said, are gonna be kinda sorta butterfly themed is what it looks like to me. Um, as for our conquests, we've got Need for speed, complete a Nephilim Rift on T10 difficulty or or higher in two minutes. I can't stop. Level 3 legendary gems to level 65. Uh, boss mode and worlds apart. Kill the following bosses on max level at T10 or higher within 20 minutes of starting a game. Stars align and curses which is going to be kill 350 or more monsters in a cursed chest event at level 70 or higher on t10 difficulty or higher i've never been able to do that i don't know why it just baffles me um and then years of war reach level 55 the greater rift level 55 solo with six class sets so i don't know that might be a little easier I know I'm definitely going to... Well, and then, of course, also we've got the hardcore variant of each of these conquests. I know I personally am going to immediately target, on a good day, Speed Demon and Boss Mode. I will probably do Years of War at some point during the season. I doubt I will ever accomplish Curses. Just so you kind of know what I'm going to be doing. So, moving right along here. So, for the Hadrix Gift... The free set for each class is going to be the Immortal King's Call set for Barbarian, Seeker of the Light for Crusader, Natalia's Vengeance for Demon Hunter, Uliana for Monk, Tragul's Avatar for Necromancer, Spirit of Erekir, and Veer's Amazing Arcana. So out of these, just by kind of eyeballing it before I look at the uh, updated patch notes, just by kind of eyeballing it, I think Necromancer is going to be off to another really fast start. Wizards are probably going to have a pretty fast start. I think Lightning Wizard is going to be really good really early on. Um, quality of life changes. So, the biggest one is, pri is Primal Ancients. When they drop on the ground, will now show a red beam instead of the normal orange beam that normal legendaries have which is good moving right along here then we've also got updates to class sets now bear in mind this is my first time reading the updated patch notes 
I have not heard, I have not watched a YouTube video, I have not read anything, I have no idea what these changes are. So, we'll see what happens. So, class set updates. The balance changes from patch 2.6.1 have had a few seasons to percolate, allowing most classes and builds to settle in and reach their best performance. That's what happens when you go a year without giving us a patch. End of salt. Uh, with patch 2.6.4, we've identified some of the best performing builds like Condemned Crusader and Wrathman Necromancer, and we're looking to bring many of the other classes up to par. This is largely a numbers pass. I think that's supposed to say patch. And we haven't focused on... We haven't just focused on class sets. The no set set. The Legacy of Nightmares will be receiving a sizable buff as well. We know to many of you... We know many of you are curious as to what changes may have occurred as the result of the testing on the PTR. We've updated the patch notes below, so you can begin plotting out your ideal build before Season 16 begins, which tells me that they're not going to do another patch, or another PTR patch. Which kind of sucks, I was hoping that they would do it. I have some video ideas that I was wanting to do on the PTR. I guess we'll have to wait. So, moving right along... Oh, they've also added some quality of life stuff. They have given us five additional armory tabs. Heck yeah. So now we have ten. Legendary potions are no longer an inventory item. Greater Rift keystones are no longer an inventory item. Uh, primals are now marked with a red beam. And let's see here. And thank... God, you can no longer manage Paragon points mid-rift. So all those people that are using macros to do way higher greater rifts than what should be attainable by a Meteor Wizard get something. I'm not going to say the word I'm actually thinking. Go kick rocks, though. Moving right along, at, we already talked about the Season of Grandeur, the Season buff. Now... Legendary Nightmare... Leg <laughs> Legendary Nightmares. The Legacy of Nightmares set bonus has been increased from 100% to 750%. That is up from the PTR. That's good. I believe it was 500% during the PTR. Uh, 750 is going to feel so good. I'm really excited about that one. For Barbarian, the Legacy of Raycor... Set bonus has been increased from 2,800% to 5,500%. Mortal King's Call up from 1,500% to 4,000. Might of the Earth, six-piece bonus has been buffed by four. Uh, it's now roughly four times as powerful as it was, going from 5,600% or 5, to 20,000%. And this is my personal favorite, Wrath of the Waste set is buffed from 3,000% to 10,000%. That's a 7,000% damage buff. Super hype. I love Whirlwind Barb. It's by far my favorite Barbarian set to play. Uh, so for Crusaders, Thorns of the Invoker has both had the two-piece set bonus and the six-piece bonus increased uh, pretty substantially. The six-piece bonus is three times as powerful and the two-piece bonus has gone from 140% to 350%. Roland's Legacy, the bonus has gone from 3300 to 13000 for the four-piece bonus, and the bonus has been increased from a 50% attack speed bonus to a 75% bonus. Eh, Roland still sucks. Sorry. It's literally my least favorite set in the game. Besides maybe Firebirds. Or Zuni Mosses. Or Helltooth. Or Natalia's. I think I'm just a hater. I may just be a hater. Seeker of the Light has been buffed by has been buffed six times from two thousand percent to twelve thousand percent. For Demon Hunter, the six-piece bonus has gone from 3,000% to 12,000%. That's pretty incredible. 
Unhallowed Essence from 100% to 350%. On Natalia's Vengeance, we've gone from 3,500 to 14,000. And my favorite set in the game, the best pushing build in the game, in my opinion, my favorite pushing build, the Shadow's Mantle, the Impale build, has gone... The two-piece bonus has gone from 1,200% damage buff to 6,000% damage buff when you're holding a melee weapon. That's going to mean when Shadow's Mantle rolls around to being the Hadrix Gift, that means you're going to be doing, like, T8 with just your two-piece bonus. <laughs> it may not be quite that intense, but you're going to be doing ridiculous damage. You're going to be flying through rifts, flying through the Torment levels, as soon as you get that two-piece bonus. That is massive. And then the six-piece bonus has gone from 50,000% to 75,000%. I've been saying that it needed to be buffed to 75,000% for several months. I literally posted a video, which will be linked in the description below, uh, back in August, late July, excuse me, before Season 15 was even announced, that my prediction was that they needed to buff Shadow's Mantle to 75,000%. So, called it. Next up for the Monk, Liana Stratagem, gone from 2100% to 9000%. Not going to be enough. In his, er, Liana's is still not going to be strong enough. In his Mantra, six piece bonus has gone from 150% to 750%. I believe that's a nerf compared to where it was in the PTR. I think that's a nerf. Monkey King's Garb has gone from 1,000% to 1,500%. Eh, okay, Sun Wukos is already ridiculous. It'll just stay ridiculous. It'll probably still be the best monk pushing build, still be the best, you know, normal rift farming build in the game. Rainman of Thousand Storms, two-piece set bonus, it's been buffed from 100% increased damage to 400% increased damage. Six-piece bonus has been increased from 13,000% to 60,000% for your dashing strike. And your uh, generators have been buffed from 13,000% to 6,000%. Pretty decent buffs. Uh, Tragol's Avatar has been buffed from 3,300% to 3,800%. I think Tragul's is the weakest of the Necromancer sets right now. This changes nothing. I still expect it to be the weakest. Um, moving on to Witch Doctor, Spirit of Erekir went from basically doubled in damage. Helltooth's Harness basically doubled in damage. Rainman of the Jade Harvester has gone from 560 seconds to 3,500 seconds on the two-piece bonus. And the six-piece bonus has gone from 1,650 seconds to 10,000 seconds of damage. That happens instantly. So, that's kind of cool. Rainman may be... I say Rainman, I should say Jade Harvester because there's like three sets that are Rainment of something. But Jade Har Harvester is possibly going to be the best Witch Doctor set. I think it might be. And then Zunimasa's Haunt is going from 5,500% to 15,000% damage. Finally, Wizard has gone from 7,500% or 750% damage buff per stack of Elemental Elemental Intelligence, is that what it's called? I don't know. To 2,000% per element. DMO, which is another one of my least favorite sets, has gone from 3,800% to 8,500%. Eh, I'm still going to hate it. That's probably going to make it strong enough that we may see DMO as the strongest wizard build. Like, that's a huge difference. But at the same time, it's also possible that Tarasha Meteor is just too strong and that it's still going to be the best solo build. And Veer's Amazing Arcana is going to be doubled in damage on the six-piece bonus. So that's pretty good. 
So, on to frequently asked questions. Uh, season 16 is going to start on January 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's going to be 7 p.m. Central time, which is my time zone. Uh, let me see. Seasons will go live on Xbox One, PS4, Switch, and PC the same night at the same time. Season 16 is going to end on approximately March 17th. Season 15 is going to go an entire month longer than what it was expected to go during this exact kind of post, but the one for season 15, announcing season 15. So take this with a big grain of salt. Then here we go. Seasonal leaderboards will be wiped. Seasonal leaderboard, non-seasonal leaderboards are eras. And it will end on January 8th. So they're probably expecting the patch to go live on January 8th. That gives us 10 days of testing. It's not going to be enough for the videos that I had planned. But we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> and I think that's about it. So that's going to be the end of today's video. I am pretty darn excited about season 16. I was pretty excited about 15, but then life got in the way. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my father passed away during season 15. I got married during season 15, you know, and I had a lot of computer issues during season 15. So I cut the computer back up and rolling uh, we, you know, we were able to have the funeral and everything for my dad and, you know, everything is kind of settling down on that front and, you know, married life is great. So I'm pretty excited about season 16. I'm excited to get into it. I'm, I'm hoping to grind the way that I started grinding at the beginning of season 15. I will post a follow-up video here in a few days based with my plans for what I'm going to do for season 16, you know, the classes I'm going to play, opening night plans, who knows, I may even play hardcore mode. That's a lie, I'm not going to play hardcore mode. I promise you I am not starting the season on hardcore mode. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, it's Primetime CP23, and I'm out.